Okay, starting out on the hand wheel portion of the tool holder for the corn. As you could see, and if you saw the other update, the most recent one before this, I showed this, it was a square piece of steel. It's about three quarters, maybe about an inch thick actually, now I forget, but it, it's the closest thing I had in size and shape to the handle that, the hand wheel that needs to be made. So as you can see here, I've cut the edges off on the bandsaw, and then I sanded down the rough spots, and I put it on, I also drilled out the center to a three quarter inch. So I've got it on the arbor, and the first order of business is gonna to be to turn it to a uniform three inch round size, and then I can place it inside the three jaw or four jaw, I'm not sure which one I'll use yet, and face it off and cut the angles, bore it out and face, cut the angles and so forth. And, but I'll, I'll, I'll bring it back for those stages. I just thought I'd grab a picture of it before I start. Okay, after about a half hour of turning, I've cut this down to three inches. Pretty decent surface finish. I might touch it with the file before I take it out. Um, it, it does need to get machined down in thickness. It's almost an inch thick here. So it's got to come down quite a bit, down to 9 sixteenths. But I'll do that in the uh, either three jaw or four jaw. I'll show that later, but just wanted to show the intermediate step on the arbor there. And so about a half hour of turning and quite a pile of swarf and uh, have no doubt I will recycle that. That's a nice thing about it. So, okay, here's, this should be the last cut. Hopefully, maybe unless I have to take a spring pass. So I've turned the outside diameter to exactly three inches. The thickness, I left it about 30 thou thick, <laughs> about a 32nd of an inch thick, so that when I reverse it, I'll be able to um, take a skim off the other side. The, the back side, what's the back side now, is what will be known as the uh, will be the visible side. I got this side as perfect and smooth as I possibly could. So let's try. I haven't even measured this just yet, but I'll try the part in it. We'll see how we look. This will be interesting. Going for it just to barely fit. There we go. Just, ooh, just barely fits. Tight. Hmm. A little on the snug side. I may take a spring pass just to open that up just a teeny bit, but looking good. So that one piece that you showed last night, well, that was Saturday night. This is, sun, uh, excuse me, that was Friday night that I cut the edges off. I've been machining this thing all afternoon. So it's the beauty of having a good lathe. Turned what was a piece of scrap that a buddy gave me into the beginnings of a hand wheel. So I'll probably take one more pass because I don't want this to be too super tight in here. And then I'll start working on the 40 degree bore and I'll bring you back for that. Okay, I'm making progress on boring the 20 degree angle, 40 degree included angle for the cone. I call it cone here. Um, as you can see, i got a little bit more to do. What I'm doing is I'm taking off about 20 thou each cut and making several passes because this there's a lot of spring in these boring bars, believe it or not. And this is some pretty tough steel here. So I'm, I'm actually going back and forth like four times. <laughs> That's why I'm not videotaping this um, this part. But I'll show you what I am doing for the setup. I've, I've zeroed out my DRO, DRO. So I'll go down all the way down to zero here on the Z. 15, 10, 8. And this gives me my starting point. I just stop with the... Um, with the cross slide in the same spot all the time, so there's two tenths off. But the uh, the x-axis is, of course, the back and forth reading here. So that's basically almost exactly where I left off last time. And I do I'm, I'm machining at a fast rate. I'll, I'll go ahead and do one segment here. So I'm about 300 RPM, putting in about a. 15 thou cut. I'm going to back off a little bit. You can hear it. It's making contact. About 16. Let's try 18 thou here. See how that does. Okay, about 18 thou. So I'm only 9 thousandths of the cut. Let's go ahead and do 20. That'll give us 10. Alright. Move it 
over, so we're just about touching. Okay, so 20 thou cut overall, 10 thou depth of cut, same Z. And I'm feeding it, no, I'm not videotaping because I'm feeding it as smoothly as I can with my hands. It's really difficult to see the cutter in there and see exactly where it is. But you can see the little pieces flying out. Maddie's video is really a lot better when he did this process. So I'm coming back out. Go one more time in. So it, it is cutting a little bit, believe it or not. And obviously it's cut a little bit. So we're looking at this, do another. So, total of six passes at this one setting. Bring the cutter so it's just about touching the work there. Back off just a hair. Zero my X. I cut the power off. Crank the assembly out of the way. And let's take a check. See how does it fit there. Yep, still a ways to go. You can see the threaded portion is sticking through. That's a good sign. But uh, so I'll keep making repetitive passes and not bore you with the entire process. But I can get a little smoother finish when I'm feeding with both hands on the compound. So I'll do that next time as well. I did sharpen my carbide cutter. I want to make sure you have it. And this is again, you know, I'm, I'm working with some scrap steel, but this was kind of a fixture plate if you saw the previous video, so I wouldn't be terribly surprised if it's tool steel. It, it's been cutting okay with carbide tools, but we'll hope that we don't have the same kind of problem that Maddie had when he degreed his. Um, I hope it's not tool steel, actually, so <laughs> we'll see. I'll keep you posted. Okay, I'm really glad I crept up on it like I did. As you can see, the collet is its just a nice fit inside there. It's just flush. I just, that's what I was shooting for. I didn't want it to be sticking proud out here because the plate, the back plate, will be on there. So I wanted it to just be a hair. It's probably like sitting a thou or so under if it's pressed in, which I think is going to be just right. Because it's going to, when the nut goes on it on the other side, it'll squinch in. And remember, this thing is about 30 thou too thick anyway. So when I flip it around, I think I'm going to call it a night. And plan out. I'll probably just leave it like that, turn the lathe off, and go in and eat supper. So I'll come back at it tomorrow, and all I've got to do basically for the machining, the rough machining parts, is flip this around and then put the uh, machine it to the right thickness overall, take a you know, 30 thou off, and then put a little concave section in there. And uh, then, of course, then the, the tricky part about the marking and the putting the holes, the 12 holes for the... And here I've got the hand wheel reversed in the three-jaw chuck. I'm carefully cutting down, taking off the last fourth hour right now, basically just like a skin cut. I didn't mean for it to be like this. I actually, I took a prior cut at 16 thou. Thought that was it. This is a little clear. There's four thousand even more that needs to come out to get it to the exact nine sixteen set. So this is it. Just to show you what I'm doing, I got the carriage locked here. And I'm using an auto feed. And you can see the hand wheel turning for me. That's why I get a nice smooth surface finish there, about 220 RPM and carbide cutter set at center height. After this, then I can start to make the two, uh, make the groove inside. I'll keep it posted on Okay, folks, now I'm working on the inside here, hollowing out the uh, inside of the hand wheel. And it's pretty interesting. It was slow going at first, but now I kind of have a pattern going. As you can see, I'm using a boring tool. I, I started out with a much smaller one. I'm going in right now about 260 thou deep, and with the lathe and forward, I can carve out a little bit. It's a lot easier with two hands. So I carve out a little bit, and then I'll show you what I'm doing. I'll, I'll carve out as deep as I can, and then I'll stop it. And then advance the tool back this way, 
<clears throat> crank it out, so to speak. And then I'll run the lathe in reverse and carve out a little bit more, taking about 30 thou or so at a time. It's interesting and it's kind of fun, you know, once you get the hang of it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, come back a little bit more. I'm sorry, I'm trying to, as you know, I'm holding this uh, <clears throat> phone in one hand and manipulating the lathe in the other. Okay, so, but remember, if you're going to go this way, the lathe has to be in reverse. So, let's put it in reverse. I can come in along the Z axis, take out a little bit, and then bring the cutter back towards me, towards the center. I'm just going back and forth like this, so it's a little bit laborious. I've sent them about 2.26 inches right now. I need to go to 5 16 which is 0.3125, so this is the technique, and I'll get this done, and the only thing after this is going to be the degreeing and the, uh, probably the, I'll probably use dimples on the outside edges instead of knurling, just like, um, I like how it looked on the one that Maddie did. Alright, here's the finished product, I'm pretty happy with how it came out, I say finished, um, I do need now the fun part with this will be to put the degree marks on it and stamp it but I think that'll work out fine and I like what Maddie did was instead of knurling I don't have a knurling tool that can hold a three inch thing anyway um, it just he put some he milled used a ball end mill and, and milled some little hand grooves finger grooves in, in his I think I may copy that another thing I'm going to have to copy for sure is I put the collet in and I put the nut on and tightened it down. I even used some vice grips to tighten it down, see how how close I could squinch it on there. And as you can see, this thing slides right on. I mean, there's it's not there's no slop, but it's not tightening down enough. It's supposed to tighten down to to uh, the collet is supposed to grip around the barrel of the uh, of the spindle here in the tool holder and it's not doing that so you noticed on Maddie's if you watched carefully he ended up making two cuts here on his collet and I think I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna have to do the same thing I'll uh, I'll rewatch his video and, and copy that technique I have to be careful not to saw the whole collet in half but um, anyway pleased with how the hand wheel part came out and how everything fits together, it fits together nicely. I just need to get some compressibility into this collet. I'll bring you back and show you how that works out. In order in, to increase the clamping force of the collet, I need to make more slits. In Maddie's video, he shows where he made a second one directly across from the main slit, and he did a nice job of it. I'm not, not going to be able to do that because the, my slitting saw blade is not wide enough to come all the way across. So what I thought about it a little bit and decided I'm going to lay mine out and do three slits 120 degrees apart. That should give, give me good clamping and then I can also cut the saw slits by hand with a hacksaw. And that way I can control and make sure I don't, don't go too deep. So a quick way to lay out. 120 degrees apart is to put the thing in a three jaw chuck. I've got the existing slit lined up with the center of this jaw and I used my sharpie marker to mark out the other two. So I'll bring you back when I make the cuts and see how this works. Okay using the three slits worked out real well. I'll show you my whole objective was to be able to tighten this by hand and still be able to rotate this if you can see that pretty well. So the spindle is rotating, I can loosen it by hand and it disengages. So that was the whole object because I didn't want to have to use a spanner. So let me pull it off and I'll show you. That's the collet with the three slits. Here's the main one cut with the slitting saw. And these other two, I actually did this in the band saw. This one I got a little carried away at and actually went through the threads but luckily I stopped short before I cut it all the way out. This one I just made a little groove and then I enhanced it with the hacksaw a little bit. So mission accomplished there. Thanks Maddie for giving me the idea and I hope this is helpful to some others. 
right, working on the debris wheel, hand wheel, whatever you want to call it, on the corn. This is the last hole. I drilled the center drill, and now it's time to drill the very last eighth inch hole. Mine are on a two inch pitch circle diameter, or one inch offset from the center, because I kind of goofed up that dimension when I was making the body of the tool holder. So, anyway, you can see I've got it on the rotary table. And I've got it up on some blocks that can be drilled through. And next, and what I did was made a little chart here so I can methodically go and check off every 30th degree. And the next thing I'll do is take my sharpening, my sharpened scriber line that I made this for the rotary table, the George Thomas rotary table, and I'll engrave the 360 degree lines around the outside. I got a little up plan how to do that too, so I'll bring you back and show a little bit of that. That will be real time consuming. Okay, here I am. About It's taken about an hour and I've gotten about a fourth of the degreeing done, but I'm just taking my time and enjoying it. It's going pretty well. Um, the, the individual marks, the one degree marks, are an eighth of an inch long. The five degree marks are three sixteenths, and the ten degree are a quarter of an inch so there we go I'm just I stopped here because as you can see I'm just about up to that clamp and I'm gonna move it around I'll, I'll replace put a clamp over here where I've already degreed it and I'll have to remove that one in a minute and have to do that as I go around so that takes even longer but it's okay it's fun to do and it'll come out nice hey everybody trying to get a magnified shot of these degree marks I'm using a little eye loop jeweler's eye loop thing i'll pull it away for a second and you can see it looks i mean i think it looks really good i just finished so it took a, a better part of an afternoon just to do this and uh, i've just gone around all the way so i'm complete now i can take my scribing tool out the scribing tool is made out of 3 16 inch drill rod that i um, bent and sharpened and, and hardened and um, I've had it ever since I made that George Thomas rotary table. So now I can take it out. And my, my game plan is to use an end mill to make little dimples. Like every uh, 10 degrees but on the 5. Just make a little indentation basically. A, a, a mill mark that will give it a little better grip. That's my plan. I'll bring you back for that. And here we are just a couple minutes later. I'm using a... 3 16 inch end mill and I'm making little grooves it's from the top of or the back of of the hand wheel it's down a quarter of an inch and I'm just going in you know 15 or 20 thousandths just to, enough to create some kind of a little surface there as you can see I got about half of it done now I did, again I made up a grid to check stuff off so I'll need to move the clamps around probably have to do this twice move the clamps around repositioning and I can continue. Got the last couple of cuts to make here. So I thought I'd show my little process for my little uh, knurling. It's not really knurling, but I'm marked off. So the next thing, crank it around. Going to 135 because I'm doing it on the fives. It. and then I've already got the depth and everything set here so I just start feeding it in and watching my DRO here I'm going to 1.570 so let's see just about to touch about the 1.585 
That's all the little knurls, it's not really knurls, but little grippers complete. So I'll vacuum up. Those things are really sharp. They're sharp like needles. So I'll vacuum those up as clean as I can and then take it all apart and I'll show you the finished product. Alright, now it's the next day and I'm numbering my hand wheels of the tool holder. That's how I call it the hand wheel. As you can see, I'm lining the. I'm, I'm using my pillar tool, and I'm lining the numbering stamps up by by hand, by eye, because that's the way I'm most comfortable doing it. The little knurling indentations that I made yesterday serve as a good little bracket uh, for the for where the numbers go, and I'm just carefully lining it up. Put a little pressure on to make sure that the stamp will hit level, and then just tap it like that and that should be should give me a good mark so I'll just repeat this I'll bring you back when I've got the whole thing done it's quite a laborious process as you can imagine but just showing the having fun using the pillar tool all right folks just to wrap up on this the second part of the tool holder here's the completed I keep calling it a hand wheel I forget what the correct nomenclature is but you can see all the 360 degree degree marks in there are very faint compared to the stamping and the quote knurling but fairly pleased with how that came out um, the only thing that's left to do is to fiddle with the spring and all that with the little detent here so I'll be working on that later on but I thought I'd wrap up the video series because that's relatively minor so showing you again that the with the collet ended up making three slits in it as I showed in one of the segments and that gives it good compressibility to come on and lock on and let me just demonstrate it real quick and I will wrap this thing up <laughs> easy for me to say there we go okay so it slides on just fine clamp it down by hand and the degree wheel moves perfectly in sync with the spindle and then I can just hold this um, hold the hand wheel loosen the nut there loosen the nut and now it's separated so that what's nice about that that should make the actual tool grinding process a lot easier whoops yeah, I do need to finish up my work on the on the spring detent and all that so really happy to get that done you know it's a couple of weeks of spare time machining to make that happen and overall like I said at the beginning it's a really good learning experience because I do have the 5c collet chuck to um, tool holder rather to make for this and I got that from Gary Martin at Martin model and pattern in the Western United States so I learned some good lessons with machining this thing and I'll be able to apply them to this as you can also see I've kind of gotten the the corn itself taken apart I'm thinking about as soon as I finish this part probably take it all apart and get it ready for some you know paint and body work go ahead and paint it before the winter gets too cold maybe we'll see I'll keep you posted on that but thanks again everybody for watching being part of the project i hope it's been interesting to you and helpful for somebody who's building one and i will keep you posted